Yeah, but we're talking still about big companies, but I don't think all the studios must, must be like that, no? Uh, yeah, only like the really big companies. You mentioned Marvel, right? Yeah, Marvel's uh -huh. definitely. Yeah, awesome. they're a bunch of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There are a bunch of companies in Berlin. They do work for Marvel, and yeah, in order sure. to get the work, they have to be like <laughs> super tight. <laughs> I worked. I worked for a company who works for who was working for Disney, and we would uh, when I would go to work, uh, they had like eye scans. To, right. to oh wow! <laughs> oh, yeah, and we could not. Yeah, exactly. We could not use any other machine other than the ones that were provided to us. Um, I'm working with the company now. Uh, they have some security. Like it's all reasonable, though. Like uh, we have a um, VPN, so you have to like to like to log in to the company website to the company. Um, like because we use like uh azira which is kind of like a task manager yeah, like, yeah. To track a task mm. uh you have to use a, a vpn a login to get in um and then they they have to whitelist your uh what's you call it they have to whitelist your your ip address so that you can even log in on the internet on that machine so it's like little stuff like that and then they like hard they hard uh, locked your screen too. So like, you know how you can turn off the sleep mode on your machine? Um, they hard locked that so that the machine will just, it will always go to sleep after five minutes of not being around it. Like it'll just automatically just log you out. So you can like log all back in again. It's really annoying though. Like I'm like, I step away to go get water and I just, I don't know, for whatever, for whatever reason, spend more time getting water, maybe hanging out with the kids for a second, come back and I have to like log all back in it's annoying but it's like i get it it's necessary <laughs> you know um yeah. but I, I but i do do also agree like i'm working with a company that's working with netflix and i don't know what their security measures are but we're just doing everything through email like i just send them stuff on email <laughs> you know i work on whatever i work on my ipad my machine and then i send them everything i do on email and then that's fine but uh anthony like the core of the <clears> topic was that um do you think it's um, nowadays it's more difficult to work as a freelancer remotely versus uh, no, working on the spot with a team or is it the same? Uh -huh. No, it's not. It's not harder. It's actually easier. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> uh, I know somebody had a question. We should go to theirs too. I think it was Wing. Wing Khan had a question. Or no, yeah, it was, yeah, uh, no. Yeah, I think it was Wing. Yeah, it was you. Um, the... The reality is that uh, people just aren't good enough. It's not that there's, it's harder <laughs> to get a job at studios, right? Uh, it's that nobody's good enough. You know what I mean? And like people want to like, okay, here's a good way of thinking about this. I want to make sure it's clear. Like I'm not saying that it's hard, isn't hard, right? Like to work remotely, you do need to, kind of, there's, there's things. It's like a, there's always going to be a challenge from time differences to uh, whatever, right? Uh, when working in, in house, there's challenges there with visas and what have you, right? <clears throat> I mean, even like with the studio that I'm working at, there, there was like some hard choices that were made because of this whole coronavirus. Like, like people had to, their visas expired and our president here is really not empathetic and just completely overcorrected in a lot of ways, right? Uh, you know, quarantine, my opinions on that are like, look, this is just a reaction to bad, like incompetency, right? Well, now we have to do it this way, you know what I mean? Uh, but is there a way that we didn't have to do it that way? Of course, like you look at other nations that aren't doing it that way and they're doing just fine, like completely open. So obviously, there's a level of incompetency that drove the visa argument now, uh, right? But the point I'm making, though, even outside of all this stuff, because that's this is a unique situation that we're dealing with right now, the thing that I'm talking about is that people just aren't good enough. That's it. And our league, that's like a big part of it. It's probably the biggest part. 
And there's this thing that happens um, where people just can't accept that they suck at something or they're the reason they're, they're the very reason that they're not getting these opportunities, you know, and I'm not necessarily putting this onto you guys that this is a bad thing. I'm making this clear to you that this is what's happening usually, you know, uh, sometimes people will come to me and say to me, like, uh, I'm like really old. I don't think I'll have an opportunity working in industry. I'm like, no, that doesn't matter. Nobody gets a resume and say, oh, this person's artwork's great. Like, but how old are they? No, that's not a thing. And even if that was a thing, like if that was a company, especially in the States, uh, it's actually against the law to discriminate. Very much like that. Uh, age, age limits aren't a thing you can scrutinize, right? Um, another thing that I hear is maybe like people are too young or another thing that I'll hear is that people, um, uh, what's another, uh, what seems to be a reasonable excuse. Oh yeah. There's a lot of competition. That's another thing, right? Oh, there's so much competition, AJ. Like how do I compete? Right. <clears throat> but if you just like actually take a second, right. And look. Yeah. You'll see what I see. Like, um, and I think I showed you guys this before. Um, concept artist. Right. So I just typed in concept artist in Glassdoor. And there are most of these jobs are going to be stateside for sure. And there's about 18 pages. Yeah. And then I think you could type in, uh, there might be remote in here. Uh, I guess not. I don't see remote. That would have been nice though. Um, but even so, like you might think, okay, I, you know, I might not be able to work for this team, whatever. I mean, but this, this job, these job posts were posted within days and weeks and sometimes hours. Right. Um, because companies need these things. Like I, I actually, during the break, I messaged 2D Illustrator for TikTok. That's funny. Um, I messaged my uh, coworkers, the guys I'm working with, the modelers. I said, hey, do we need help? Right? Because we're ahead right now and we have to polish in the coming months. You know? Uh, we might want to contract somebody for a few weeks. Right? And I'm like, like tell me what we need. And what we can do yeah and they're like okay yeah so we'll look into it you know because uh yeah we should be doing that uh we're i just messaged one of our contractors he's a concept artist he lives in india you know uh he's amazing he's really good right and uh we're working with them you know it's really like it's not a problem <laughs> you know what i mean like we ask him to do some concepts, he does those concepts and we're like, tight, you're tight, you know? Um, I mean, if you go to art station, I mean, this is more of the same, you know? Like there's tons of studios looking for tons of work. So it's not like, um, it's not like studios aren't there looking for people, right? I mean, even some of these companies you might not even heard of, you know? Uh, I mean, some of these you may have heard of, obviously, like Blizzard, but I, I, I've never really heard of a company called uh, End Dreams. Now, that's not to say that they're looking for uh, concept artists, but let's just see. Let's see what they are looking for. Uh, yeah, they're looking for 3D artists. And it looks like right here, uh, senior level and principal level. So it seems like, to my point, they're looking for badasses. You know what I mean? They're trying to find people that are actually really good. You know, the reason why people have a hard time getting jobs at these big companies is not because of anything that I haven't already taught you guys, you know, the only things you can control is the quality of your work and the connections you put out there, right? The, the way you communicate to people, you know, are you putting your artwork out there for people to even know? See, these companies are looking for high-level concept artists. And look, 
some of these companies are so desperate they're even potentially i don't know if this is still true because of what's going on with the coronavirus right <laughs> but they look they're like look man we'll even relocate you you see what i'm saying so the question is can you apply for this job and can you actually do the job that they're asking for you uh ignore this stuff too by the way i know this this sometimes turns people off i don't have any experience how can i ever get a job trust me if you are really really good um it doesn't really matter right uh danny draws let me show you so this is uh my buddy danny gardner when he got his job uh at sony santa monica he was straight out of college he was uh 19 years old when i met him right straight out of art center uh we hired him because of this right if you look at this image here, would you think that this is student, quote unquote, student work? I'm asking. No. No. Right? So why would we be like, oh, he doesn't have three years of experience. Oh, well. No, dude, we're like, no, we want him because he makes images like this. He clearly can communicate design. He knows how to do thumbnails, sketches. Yeah, get him in here right away. <laughs> you know? And uh, now he's like, you know, a leading concept artist. He works over at uh, uh, Respawn, I think. And he's only even better now. He's just even better than he was before. Hold on, my daughter's interrupting me. She came back from Minecraft. Anyway. Um, oh, this is so cool. Anyway, right? I mean, there's some people that when you go online, you know, and you find like a, I don't know, I'm trying to see if I can find somebody I've never seen before. I'm trying to see. Like an artist that I, I feel like, okay, I don't know who this person is. I don't know if they are working already. Yeah, I guess they are working for Raid Shadow Legends, that game that you see everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, they work in the Ukraine. I don't know if, who makes Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends developer. Probably makes them. Who? Plarium. Plarium. Yeah, but let's let's get into it. I don't know what that means. Um I I've never heard of them. They're a, they're published by Israeli game developer. Whoa, see? I didn't even know that. So you have a company that's seems like they're in Israel, right? Yeah, but the right team is in the Ukraine, so <laughs> but huh? only the HQ is in Israel. I'm sorry, say that again? Wait. They don't hire the artists from Israel. Their whole team is in the Ukraine. <laughs> Just the HQ is in Israel. Yeah, okay. You get it though, right? Like this is like a global company apparently. Like, they don't work in one specific location, right? And so, like let me put it to you this way and then we'll, we'll go and answer some questions, right? Um, it's bad business to only hire people based off of some sort of discrimination, um, whether it's location, age, sex, uh, orientation, um, ethnicity, right? You know what I mean? Like if you happen to be a Russian like puppet and you hate Ukraine for whatever reason, then you couldn't hire that artist we just saw because you're a racist, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's stupid. Uh, but I'm sure there's our Russian companies that would look at that Ukrainian artist and be like, yeah, I totally want that artist. They just won't let anyone know, you know, because it's pretty a hot topic there, right? Um, that's why the States, at least in the past, I don't know how we are nowadays, but uh, was global, global leaders in so many things. Uh, it's because we, we are so open to who we work with, 
right? And uh, uh, countries like China are starting to do the same now, you know? They're starting to kind of stop being so exclusive, you know what I mean? I mean, they still are, but they're like being, they're, they're kind of slowly winding down, you know? Um, in fact, they're starting to buy out a lot of American companies, right? So they could actually diversify their, their clientele. Uh, the company I work for, Nexon, that's a Korean company. They built the American division, the one that I'm working at now. So I work for technically a Korean company that has an extension in the America, right? It would be like if, uh, it would be like working for Google India, right? Like you live in India and you're Indian and you work for Google, but Google's an American company, right? That's essentially what's happening, you know? And so uh, if I own a company and the law permits me to hire somebody like, like any one of you guys who are overseas, right? Which it does, at least for now, we'll see how the president feels. Okay. Um, it's not that big of a barrier to work with you. Okay. Uh, the only real barrier is that uh, to get you over here, right? That's definitely a thing, you know, but to work for uh, a company remotely uh, is not a big deal. And it's only going to become less of a deal even now because people are doing it that do live, like I do live in Irvine and my company is in Irvine. And we are all working from home and we're still making a game. You know what I mean? So the case for having people work in-house being better, that argument is starting to kind of dissolve and people are starting to see it. And this is actually incredibly dangerous because of the reality of, yeah, why do we need to have more workers in America? This is kind of the argument for why you know, our country should put tariffs and other kind of laws in place to protect American workers, you know, which is a very conservative argument, but it's true. Like it's cheaper to work with people who li like, if I were to hire artists from Serbia, for instance, uh, which I have a lot of students from, from Serbia, you know, they're living uh, st like the living conditions um, in terms of uh, cost are really low, right? So if I wanted to like pay a Serbian artist who's like, let's say just as good as me or if not even better than me, right? Because they're just hungry and they have that passion, right? <clears throat> and I charge, they charge me like, hey, you know, I want to get paid a thousand dollars a month, but their like living expenses are like $200 a month. They're like living it big, you know? Where a thousand dollars a month for me, where I live would, I would be, in poverty you know so that's the dangers of a global market but the reality is our america and where most of the companies are that a lot of people work for or even other companies even the ones that are the israeli companies uh operate off of capitalism and capitalism uh at its best allows opportunities for anybody and everybody you know regardless of the social ramifications you know so with that all being said why can't you get those jobs? It's for the very two reasons I keep telling you guys every single time, right? Uh, you need to put your artwork out there so these companies know you even exist, right? So that the headhunters are like, hey, this person looks like the kind of person we need, yeah? Uh, and being good so that that even happens, you know? And if you do those two things, like I was saying to Fabian earlier, like those two things specifically, I guarantee you, you will get work. It's a promise. It's not that there's no opportunities. There are plenty, but only for really, really, really good artists. That's when you start to get opportunities very often. Uh, if you're not so good, you still have opportunities because like I just showed you, companies are desperate for artists just in general. And if they find someone that is remotely good after like searching for months and barely finding anybody, right? Because either they're working or they're too expensive, you know, like if you show any remorse of some quality that they could use, they're probably going to snag you, you know? And then if you come in and you pull, pull your weight and prove yourself, right? Then not only are you building a better portfolio for the future, uh, you're getting that work experience, you know? 
But if you are living in this world of like, well, this and that and that and this, even if there's some truth to that, uh, it's too external. You're you're pushing the the faults of, or you're pushing the reality uh, away from you, right? You're pushing the reason why things aren't working out is because of these other things, which they're like, again, I don't actually want to discount that. I do think there's some truth to those types of things, those types of words, you know? But you could do something about it, you know what I mean? That's what I'm getting at. <clears throat> um, you know, I was talking to one of my family members about this like uh, coronavirus stuff. And she sent me this video of like this conspiracy theory is the pandemic was the name of the, the little documents thing. And I do f feel that it's silly that YouTube and Facebook and all these places are constantly like um, constantly uh, taking it down. And in the very beginning of the vi like video, if you watch it, like the premise is that nobody's allowing this to stay up. And then it's like actually happening. It only makes their case even stronger, right? And, um, but I watched it and I was like, and I told her, I was like, you know, the problem I have is that people always think that it's so crazy. And there's like this elaborate thing going on, right? And I was like, man, people just can't, especially as Americans, we just can't admit, like our arrogance, just can't admit that we're just a bunch of idiots. Like we didn't listen, we didn't take anything seriously, we're just a bunch of fucking morons and we're paying the price, right? Like we just can't admit as a nation that we're just stupid. It's easier just to say, no, 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 like there was some crazy conspiracy, we're all smart. We didn't do anything wrong. There's just all this stuff going on. It's like, no, man, like we're just dumb. Um, and I mean, like, if you're trying to tell me that this huge conspiracy is controlled by this larger entity of group of people that are just like the, the freaking um, Illuminati, right? Like the same government who runs the DMV? Like, get, the, get your shit out of here, man. Um, and I'm not even saying that like the government is bad at doing stuff. I'm saying like, just in general, when you look at large companies, like I've worked for very big studios like Blizzard, uh, riot, right? So you might think, and trust me, when you guys eventually work for a big studio, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? And some of you guys may already experience this. Like these companies move millions and millions of dollars. They work on hundreds of million dollar projects, you know? Crazy big stuff, epic projects, right? <clears throat> and then when you actually work for them, like I worked at Blizzard, and you hear and you see that nobody has their shit together. We're like barely holding things together. Uh, the Project Titan was a seven year project that cost them nearly a quarter of billion dollars of money to work on uh, and ultimately got canceled, you know? And this is like a, a, a Blizzard like makes hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, close to billions of dollars, right? Like annually. And they have over 6,000 employees, at least at the time that I was working, weren't, weren't able to make a new game and, and have it be functional in seven years with all that money. You know what I mean? Like, this is the reality. Like, this is how it is. When you have large groups of people doing large, like, really big things, it's very hard to do. Um, and so what they did was they, they downsized the team. Uh, they got real serious. They realized that they are the problem, like the leadership was the problem. They changed the leadership, they changed their direction, and then that's how they made Overwatch in less than a year. You know? Uh, that's what we need to do in our nation and other nations, just change the leadership, change like, kind of like do a little bit of a hard reset, <laughs> you know? That's the real problem. Um, Cause she was, uh, my, my uh, aunt actually, she was saying like, well, you know, did, did you know that uh, they're giving hospitals money when they said that they have corona uh, virus cases. I was like, yeah, that feeds into the delusion of this conspiracy. But like, you're thinking of it as a conspiracy, but the reality is like, no, they're doing it because this is like a, a, a pandemic and they don't have enough resources. So what's going on is the government's trying to help give them money so that they can kind of keep shit in order, right? To actually buy supplies, employ their employees for overtime, there's a lot of reasons why you should send money. Now, is that how they should have done it? 
I don't think so because now you're right. It does imply that you can incentivize to just make people have Corona even if they didn't, you know what I mean? But the, the, the root of the problem is not a conspiracy. The root of the problem is bad leadership and bad implementation, you know? Uh, when people need help and you're just like, like uh, another good example in the States was that when they, uh, they made the small business loan and they opened up the gates and then big businesses were taking those loans. <laughs> It's, again, it's just bad implementation. So anyway, so getting all the way back to art so we don't get too political. Uh, the point I'm making is that like that, the same thing that drives those like political arguments I just made is the same thing that I think us artists fall into where it's just easier to kind of like shift why I can't do a thing, right? Oh, uh, well, it's not, my, it's not me, it's them. That's just too easy, yo, right? Uh, and I don't want to discount the reality that there is a them, right? There are greedy people. There are um, a lot of competition. There is people that uh, have it easier. I have it easier than most of you guys. I live in California. I live in the States and I'm, Amer I'm American. That's going to give me a lot of advantage, advantages to work for American companies. Absolutely. Right? Um, but that doesn't mean that those of you who do not live in America or or aren't American can't work for American companies because I just gave you a couple examples of people um, who don't live in America that seem to be working just fine. One that I'm working with correct, like currently, uh, we've hired two artists. One is an American artist. Uh, he works for uh, some actually big studios here in America. And I think he's currently a full-time artist at a, an American company, right? And then also, um, an artist who lives in India, who is not American, you know? So if that's not enough evidence, uh, that I don't know what else to tell you, though. Know? Uh, I'm not going to discount the challenges that some people may have. I'm just saying you have to adapt with those challenges. I had a student uh, who was in Canada said, hey, there's a lot of artists here that would love to have workshops, but nobody does it. And then I said to him, then why don't you do it? And he said, holy shit, I didn't even think about it, that I could do it. He's like, but isn't it like crazy hard? It's like, I don't know, try. And uh, then he ended up making edge control in Toronto. Uh, same thing happened with another student who was in Spain. They said the same thing. And I was like, yeah, well, I don't see why you, you can't do it. Uh, and that's when they made uh, nonstop Barcelona. You know, there's always the opportunity to be the first. If it's not, if it doesn't exist in your country, right? You can be that first pioneer. But uh, I think a lot, a lot of you guys live in countries where there's already people that have done it. So, you know, so you don't even have to be the first. You can follow by their lead. Uh, but let me, let me be 100% clear. What really will drive your opportunities in the future is getting your stuff out there and having work that is undeniably great. If you could do those things, as simple as it sounds, it is what it is. Um, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. That's also very true. And it's like I mentioned earlier, it's easier to knock buildings down than to build a big builder one, a uh, bigger build a bigger one, right? And uh, as you can as you can probably tell, as your as your mentor. I'm not here to just teach you guys how to be good painters. I'm trying to teach you guys how to have, be good artists and, and people that are actually um, a little bit more positive and op optimistic. Now, I'm not sure what the, why you guys brought up this whole conversation or what you know the, the concerns were, but hopefully this addresses a lot of those and gives you a better perspective to kind of move forward, right? Because it can be very distracting to think the other way, that's all. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there is competition. There are barriers to get jobs if you work overseas, absolutely. Do not make a mistake there. But trust me, there are a lot of opportunities available. You just gotta be undoubtedly good. And uh, any one of you guys can totally do that. Believe that, okay? All right, let's take the first question. Wayne, you had a question? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, shit, dude. It got real. 
uh, okay, so I made a conscious choice last year to like start posting every day on Instagram. And like some days are really, really good. And you know, I really like that for that put in. And some days I struggle a lot with the quality and I post anyway. Uh-huh. Right? Um, yesterday I sort of like broke down because <laughs> I was like painting the color and then I couldn't fix it. And I just I was like freaking out a little bit. And I, and I do believe in like the whole mamba mentality thing. And then like, you know, keeping you right on track. I just don't know if I am. Does that make sense? I'm just like, I, I, I worry that I'm just posting art that isn't of quality. Sure. And I know practice will get me that because, you know, practice got me here. I just yeah, want totally. you know, the right track is, you know, how it will so, affect so the why, overall perception. Yeah, so why did you stop posting? No, I didn't stop. I posted it anyway. Oh, so but you said, that, okay, hold on. Let me, let me re- understand because I might have misheard you. Okay. You said you started to promise to post. You said you were going to post more often is that what you said because it sounds like no i more. i post every day i made a conscious choice to post every day got it okay because i thought and you I said you were, made a conscious choice not to post every day and i was like what? no 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 oh, okay no. no so i misheard yeah. the first statement okay so the next statement uh makes a lot more sense to me all right okay so um yeah that is totally reasonable feeling that way that's why mm-hmm. you should you should divorce yourself from the idea that you should only post good artwork, right? Um, you should just post artwork, right? Right. Um, so I posted something on my Facebook. There you go. All right. So you know, I posted this last night. I missed uh, yesterday. I posted something, but the day before, I didn't. I missed a day. So I was like, oh man. Hmm. But I was super busy, so uh, it's okay. And and so this morning, or sorry, like last night before the day was over, I was about, almost going to skip another day. It would be two days of skipping. So I was like, all right, I just got to do something. Uh, I spent like thirty five minutes on this, you know. Yeah. And although you know, I think I could do better, right? And if you look at in terms of the kind of a reaction I get on this, you know, people. Yeah. Like, you'd be surprised. People have, like, I thought this would be fine. Like, I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to share this and move on with my life. But there's actually a pretty good reaction to this, right? Mm. Although it was like, to me, honestly, it was like a garbage sketch. But I was like, I got to do, because it's not about quality here. I have done much, much better 3D art and concepts. I can even show you. Oh, yeah, I'm already there. Yeah, here we go right like if you see this page when it loads up Mm. you know i've made some really bangers dude like some really cool 3d concepts you know uh like this one's still by far one of my favorite 3d concepts and i don't mean like a 3d paint over like it's an actual concept that you can like rotate around and look at it Mm. you know to me this is at a high ass quality for a 3D concept, you know, and this was done about four years ago. So clearly like this compared to this, in my opinion, is not, there's no comparison. This is better, you know? Um, Like this is another good example of just like a really good, but these like take me a long time. Like I spent a long time working on these, you know? Because 3D just takes a little bit more than like painting for me at the moment Mm. okay if i do 3d paint overs this is not a 3d paint over this is not a 3d concept um same thing four years ago this is back when i was learning 3d coat but you can see even here like when i there was a pattern of like when i started learning 3d coat i went like real hard you know i was like designing like so often you know I was designing like these alien creatures designs and putting them into the thing. And I was feeling really cool. Uh, This character right here that I made for this video game project that I was working on that I stopped because I realized I don't want to make a whole video game by myself. Um, (laughs) This took me like almost like a week to do, I think maybe even longer. 
right? Mm. From modeling, sculpting, all that good stuff. Uh, coloring, details, everything. Yeah? Yeah. My goal is not to do this because I know I can't. Right? If I really want to sit down and make a very nice looking 3D concepts, I've done it professionally too, you know? Uh, even this, I think, took me uh, a very short amount of time, but I did end up painting over it, you know? Yeah. Like a lot of this stuff is paint over it. Um, but it was like a demo, right? And some of this stuff is not good at all, but I still posted it. So what, what am I getting at is that it is time for me to just be faster. That's my thought. How can I start to do a 3D sculpt design in less than an hour? And I'm still like, like this is like 30 minutes, right? This right. is about two hours almost. It took me to get there, you know? Um, this was a little bit over an hour, I think. I was like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. This was like probably my most successful one that I did in such a short time. But, you know, I look at it, it's just like a creature. That's not as challenging. Uh, I didn't have time to do anything really. So I just made like some sort of fucking thing, <laughs> you know? Um, this one, I, I learned a lot, but this took me about an hour and a half. But see, it's only mostly the upper torso. This took me about an hour, I think. And again, it's just mostly the upper torso and it's just like some ambiguous monster design. This took me about an hour and it was even less, right? Yeah. This took me about an hour and it was just a head and it's symmetrical. Yeah. You know? But I'm getting faster. I'm like now getting the legs in there. <laughs> you know, in under half an hour. And I'm getting some of that detail applied. And I'm starting to recognize that an image that took me half an hour, even if I felt like it was garbage, right? And I've talked to you guys many, I've talked to you guys about this many times, right? The way you feel about a painting has no bearing on what other people feel about it, right? Mm. This thing that took me, um, like this one I felt I really liked, but the one I just showed you got more likes. You see that? And this one, was I don't know if I liked it or not. I just I liked it, but I knew that like it took me a long time. It took me longer than I would want. An hour is still probably an hour and a half is still probably really fast in, in perspective. But you get my point. Right? Yeah. So why am I doing this? Well, because I want to try to get good. And I'm sharing it because I'm also trying to see, I'm trying to get that positive criticism. I'm trying to see how other people feel about it. I'm outsourcing my opinion a little bit. I like I like mostly what I do, right? There's nothing that I do that I'm not like, oh, this is trash or this is good. Like, I, I already talked about this, but I share it because I'm trying to see, because I did feel differently. I felt like, oh, okay, I could have definitely made this better, but whatever. The goal isn't to try to make good art. The goal is to try to learn how to be faster, to make good art fast. Because if you give me time, I can do it. I've proven it throughout my whole career. I don't need that validation. That is already proven, you know? But even if that wasn't true, which I still believe I can be better, I bought an anatomy book again, uh, anatomy for sculptors, right? Let me show you, let me show you my ambitions. My ambitions is to have 3D concept art that looks like this in less than an hour. And it may be, it may very well be impossible. But we'll find out dude. if anybody can figure it out, right? It's me, right? This done in an hour. Okay? Mm. But baby steps, dude. Literally look like a little baby, dude. <laughs> right? But right. slowly but surely, right? I'm going to be like, okay, let me try to make something like a fucking as crazy as this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the wrong way, the long way, the hard way, right? And then I'm going to be like, all right, I can shave this off if I do it this way. Maybe if I pre-make some of these, like... Do I actually have to like always make this shape over and over and over again? You know, like, do I have to remake like a washer? Nah, I can just fucking make that an asset. You know, do I have to re remake like 
the bearings here or really what I need to care about is can I make these larger shapes really quickly and put the secondary detail much faster. You know what I mean? Um, with painting, I learned that, right? Like, so you can see that like this character design, I learned that um, I don't have to like render this, these straps to look realistic for you to kind of understand that that's a strap. You know, so I can start off just doing this and that's probably enough for most people, you know? Mm. And the posting every day is to keep yourself accountable. And when you start to keep yourself accountable, you uh, produce more content. And when you produce more content, you get better. And you start to build up fans. Because right now, yeah, maybe your work is not as good as you would like. And it's not as good as you know, some of your favorite artists but you'll start to share and share and share and then eventually you'll start to get a fan base. I have people who follow me, who followed me back when I first started out like on a, a DeviantArt and Blogspot. You know? Mm. Like people that have known me since the beginning of my career. You know? Yeah. And I cherish those people very much. And so, when I tell you, you should just post, it's for all those reasons, so many good reasons to do it, right? Accountability, exposure, teaching you how to just have a habit of posting, letting go of like, like quality, you know, focusing on quantity that will eventually fuel quality. I do think that there is something to be careful of, of like just posting a bunch of trash artwork with no ever trying to get better. I think that could be a problem, but yeah. I don't know anyone that does that. Usually the opposite happens. Like you'll like, oh, I gotta do a better artwork next time. I gotta like basically get rid of all this trash artwork <laughs> by by overwhelming it with better artwork. Does that make sense? Like put yeah, another that, one that, that will replace. Favorite. Yeah, like because if you want to always like stick the landing, you may never land. You know, that's the yeah. problem with the other approach. the The only reason why I really fight against the other one is just statistically speaking, most people that do that approach generally never make a thing um you know hmm. and it's it's a, it's a real gamble too you know what i mean like it's a real fucking gamble to think that when you are done and you yourself are very happy with what you've done that other people will also like it you know and that's the part that sucks like when you eventually do share that work right yeah and everyone doesn't respond the way you're hoping it hurts so much more than if you're just like, ah, whatever. I just bust this out, you know? Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, or for, unfortunately the reality is like, yeah, you get that effect where if you put all this time in and then you eventually share it and people don't like it, that happens more or people don't like it as much as you think that happens more than people would want to admit, you know, yeah. where I just share work all the time. And then I just see how the how people react to it. Like it was my own internal algorithm. Like I just realized like that people liked my garbage sketch that I felt was garbage more than the stuff that I detailed in the past. And I'm not surprised by this because I've already experienced this, experienced this thousands of times before already. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what that's why I have that wisdom is because I've already experienced this idea of whatever I feel generally is never true, <laughs> you know? Like what I usually think is garbage, people tend to really gravitate towards some things that I think that is not, people tend to not care about. Okay. Um, but I, I will say it is important to make artwork that you like though, okay? So that if yeah. someone doesn't like the artwork that you like, that's fine. But if someone also loves the artwork that you like more, like if you do artwork A and you get like, I don't know, 20 likes on it, which is not a lot. And you're just like, all right, whatever. Uh, even though you put your heart and soul in it and you felt good about it. Uh, but then you do artwork B where you put less work into it, but it's still something you like, you know, like you still liked it. You felt good about it, good enough about it that you wanted to post it. Right. Um, and then you get hundreds and hundreds of people responding well to that, you know, positively then you're just like, oh, I'm onto something with this one. Let me do another one just to see if it's not a fluke. And then people react again. They're like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, dude. 
And you're like, oh, tight. And so you do it again, and, and then you start building an audience around that specific art style. Um, and the reason why I say you should do what you like is because if you, there's like, for instance, Instagram modelers or artists who will make artwork that they know will sell and be successful, or they'll do things that they know will sell. Like there's this one um, uh, TikTok video that I was watching where all the videos were that were popular was of like a toxic relationship between this kid and his mom, mm. right? So that's the content. That's what sells on their channel. Uh, you don't want to be in that place, right? Because I, that was probably just like a one-off joke and it was just an accident that it was, or maybe not an accident, it's just like, it was not intentional for that it was going to go viral, but it did. So then that person decided that they're only going to make content like that. And I'm sure you've uh -huh. seen or heard people who fall into this trap and then they, they then now become a victim of the content that they started with. There was this one person who um, all she did was like cook while drinking, you know? Mm. And so when then when she tried to do different content, because obviously that's fucking dangerous and not a long-term, you know, goal that she should be like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to be a crazy drunk, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, people didn't receive that new content well, and she had a really bad reaction to that. Like, she had a very, like, she had like a nervous breakdown that like nobody liked her new content, and it sucks. But that's because she didn't build an audience around that. It would be like if uh, all of my hundred and fifty thousand subscribers, uh, I just started to do like really, really cute, like Ghibli, um, <laughs> like puppetry, like made little yeah. toys. Like, I'm sure there would be a good group of fans of mine that'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you're really like thinking out the, outside the box. But the majority of my fans would be like, the hell's going on with AJ, dude? Like, why did he like change his whole, his whole like strategy in life, right? Hmm. I remember uh, one, one of my friends wanted me to share their Kickstarter on my social uh, because they were just looking at numbers, right? Oh, look at all those people. And I was like, bro, it's like trying to sell a Twilight book to a bunch of metalheads. They're not going to be into it. <laughs> you know? Like, you're, you're, you're just looking at a raw number thinking that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get those people to buy it. It's like, nah, dude. Like, you know? Um, mm. In fact, I got uh, approached by sponsors, uh, like watches. They were like, hey, you know, like, sponsor our watches. And I'm like, dude. Nobody, none of my fans are going to buy your watches. Um, but I get it. They're just like, they just see numbers. They're like, oh, we got to get those numbers. Even if we get 10 people, that's enough. It'll be worth it. <laughs> and so um, that's the best way that I, I can describe that whole methodology of thinking of why you shouldn't worry so much about the quality because it will come in time. Believe that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Eddie. Yeah. Let's take on another question. It kind of reminds me of like a, if Rufio met Mad Max. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. All right. Uh, yeah, I just had like a few like, little short questions. Uh, the 3D coat, um, I heard someone saying it doesn't, use like you can stretch as much as you want the mesh like it and it basically is like acts like a dynamic kind of dynamish thing like how does that work yeah it's voxels voxels okay so uh voxels for those of you who aren't sure what that means from just me saying it out loud um it's just 3d pixels right and if you think of it that way it's like i can i can put pixels here right this is why people don't paint with vectors, right? Like this, because this is mathematical. Now, what's great about this is that it scales, you know? So like you can have like a very low res image. Um, you can have like a very low res image and then you scale it up because those points are determined by math. It doesn't really matter, right? So voxels, and let me save this before, let me go. Oh, shoot, I forgot to send this out. Damn it, gotta do it right now. Um, 
Where the hell am I saving this stuff? There you go. Um, so is it kind of like the Oculus Painter thing? How basically you're just painting yeah, pixels maybe. in 3D space? Yeah, so it's it's all voxels, right? It's actual. It's like it like acts and feels like uh, clay because it's it's almost it is clay because it's three dimensional pixels. So you can do something like this. You can cut a hole in it. I'm gonna get 3D coat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why you could do. So hard. <laughs> yeah, that's why you could do stuff like this. Like you can like just like hard and it just works as you would anticipate right yeah uh, that's why you could do stuff like this you can just draw 3d shapes because it's like pixels it's like 3d pixels yeah cool now awesome now what zbrush is and any other sculpting software what they are doing is that they are like yeah the dynameshing is just like it's it's constantly recalculating the topology right but it's like vector based stuff, right? It's like points in space. Because here's the problem with 3D coat if you don't, if you, okay, so if you think about 3D coat as pixels, right? Um, right, so if I make this very small, like if you, let's say you're dealing with like a. Um, oh, I see already. Uh, let's say you're making like. Um, but you get what I'm saying, like, uh, you know, like a low resolution pixeled image, right? Yeah, like if you had like 200 by 200 and then you yes. like scaled it to 3000, so, it would be all pixelated. So like if you try to like, let's increase the resolution. So it's gonna look like it's getting the effect that you're looking for, but you'll see what happens when we start to scale it up. Like we can really go high. Let's go as high as we can want, right? We can get into the millions, right? It's kind of having a weird effect it's because it's technically tiny, you know? And uh, I think that throws people off because they're expecting it not to do that. So like when you start to scale it up, it starts to, it starts to act real weird, like still, like it's still kind of pixelated, even though it's really high. Oh, actually it recalculated. But there's some weird stuff that happens. Watch, I'll show you too. Like, yeah, so it's, it's still kind of like doing this thing and especially when you start to do something like scale it in a different direction, right? Like look at how it's like kind of like rounding this out. and It's like shading that really weird, you know? And when you try to sculpt over here, it's like real weird. Even though it's voxels, like 3D, 3D pixels, but it's like you're like painting on stretched pixels this whole time, right? It's not the same kind of that you're dealing with with uh, ZBrush with stretching. That's like stretching in a different way. That's just because you're moving, um, you're moving, um, what you call it? Um, vertices. Vertices. And there's nothing <laughs> in between those two vertices to pull from to actually sculpt. Gotcha. Right? Where in this, if that's not the problem. It's actually, there is plenty of geometry here, right? But yet, it's like stretching this brush. You see that? It's weird, right? Mm -hmm. It's because it's like it's like three dimensional pixels. So if you understand this, then you will know to start bigger and to not scale the way that I just scaled, right? Yep. Like if I want to make this wider, I have to use something like the pose tool. That was not a great selection, um, and then move it out because now it's stretching it in a traditional sense. And when you hit enter, it's going to um, confirm it, right? And then it's gonna, because it's so high resolution, it's gonna go, it's gonna cook a little bit. So now, um, if we do something like, whoops, let me go back to like a regular brush and let's lower this resolution because it's too high. It's gonna take a second to cook. All right, there you go. So I can smooth this out, but I can, I will, I can sculpt in as sculpting as I would anticipate, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's what I was anticipating would happen if I sculpted, but like I had to stretch it, like I had to scale it 
by actually moving geometry, not by like scaling it because it's like, uh, uh, it would be like if I did this to my painting mm -hmm. and then obviously my brush is not going to do that. It's going to still be maintained, right? Which is what I would want to happen on 3D Coat too, but it's like 3D Coat can't understand that. It's like, no, you're, everything's fucking skewed now, you know? And uh, if you understand that, then you'll understand how to use a lot of the 3D Coat tools a little bit more effectively because it is like a bit of a transition when you're expecting certain things that you would normally see in like a normal vertice sculpting workflow. Um, but the thing is that 3D code has the best of both worlds. You can turn it to, they, they call it surface mode. You can turn it to the, you can, you can go back and forth. Uh, be very careful of that too, but you can totally go back and forth, you know? Gotcha. Uh, and in my eyes, uh, 3D code um, as of now is, my favorite uh tool <laughs> yeah i was just trying to find an alternative to like 40 bucks a month i just want a program i can buy like 3d coats got a... is the amateur license uh you just can't make professional work with that it's the full program right maybe i don't know okay look into it i don't remember uh, i have the professional version so i can't speak to that um what i will say is that um uh I do support subscription models because it su supports the actual developers. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot when they don't do that. Uh, ZBrush did not do that. And I remember I had, a, I had a debate with one of my friends who loves ZBrush. And I was like, dude, ZBrush is going to die unless they get their shit together. They need to do sub model. And he's like, fuck that, dude. And I was like, don't you want ZBrush to do succeed? <laughs> like, you love it. <laughs> And uh, I was like, think about it. You work at ILM, right? ILM buys 10 seats, right? That's all they need. They buy 10 seats. Now they have 20 seats, right? Because each seat counts as two. So now they have, and they spend, let's say, like 10 grand for those 10 seats. Yeah? ILM makes billion dollar movies, dude. You know? <laughs> and they only spent 10 grand like 10 years ago. That is not fucking fair, dude. Right? Like yeah. Zebra should get some of that, dude. They should totally get some of that. They need to change their business strategy. Like something like what Epic does, like Epic is like free until you start making money. And even then people are like, what? They want some of the money that I made from the game that I use their engine. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, that's cool. That's like, that's totally reasonable. What the hell is people's problem, right? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to even make the game without their help. I remember when uh, P uh, PUBG like sued Epic because they made Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, bro, they built the infrastructure in which your game could even exist. They saw that you had it and they were like, more than happy to help they did help and they're like, hey we're gonna use this because we built it for you guys why not we're making this game it's not doing well let's just add this game mode see how it goes right <laughs> and it, obviously it was successful and they were like oh yeah, this is great and then like uh pubg's like oh no that's like people getting mad at pose pose thieves or whatever <laughs> yeah 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 it's like you can't like it's just a pose you can't own a pose yeah exactly and it's just um it's just it, it it speaks to a deeper insecurity, I think, that happens. And so um, I'm telling you guys, when you have the opportunity to pay subscription models to the tools that you love, you should do it. And you should support it. Uh, even if they're like a mega corporation like Adobe. People talk so much shit about Adobe, man. I'm like, y'all made your whole living off of Adobe products and you don't want them to make more money? Like, I don't get it. Like, uh it's not like Adobe is doing nefarious things with their money. They're actually making better tools every, every single year. Uh, I think what ends up happening is people get mad because Photoshop is not like uh, catered to artists, right? And I have to remind people that that's because it isn't. It's Photoshop. It's for pho photographers. <laughs> we, we are actually just lucky that they made a powerful brush painting engine that we were able to use until other alternatives came. But the the fact remains Photoshop is still a premier photo manipulating tool. No, no tool that I know of has come close to what they can do. Right. Um, I work at like 10,000 by 10,000 resolution um, sometimes. And a lot of other painting softwares cannot do that. Right. 
um matte paintings yeah photoshop all the way right yeah and so it's like uh, i don't get it and it's like if they actually made it cheaper right before you had to spend like a thousand dollars up front and again i appreciate that like now i own it forever attitude but uh yeah you, you get what i'm saying though like um <clears throat> Like they're actually making it more accessible, even if it has a cost. Uh, you know, people got really upset when they when Photoshop or sorry, Adobe said that they're going to do a Fresco and they were going to charge Fresco or Fresco was going to do like a monthly subscription. And people are like, why would I do that when I could uh, get Procreate or uh, Infinite Painter? Which is again, yeah, those are great arguments. But eventually, that subscription model, even if they only had ten thousand users on Fresco, right, versus let's say a hundred thousand on Procreate or even two hundred thousand. Okay, if you think of it that way, like, you know, two hundred dollars to $200,000 uh, for a one-time purchase of $10, that's about, you know, you're getting close to millions of bucks, like $1 million to $2 million, right? And if you do 10,000 uh, people that give you 7 to $10 a month, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 100,000 people, 200,000 people spending it for one time, the $10, they made it $2 million, sure, in that one-time purchase. But... With only 10,000 people giving you $10 a month, you make that same amount of money with less people, right? And only more and more people are coming and that number is gonna get higher and higher and they're gonna have more development funding and they have reliable income because they know how much money they're making every month. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, Fresco is gonna catch up and they're gonna destroy the competition unless they also change the subscription. It's just the reality, right? Right now everyone's like, you know, uh, procreate and infinite painter fanboys which i am i love both of the softwares but this is it's delusional to think that adobe is gonna like fail they have other ways of making money too you know uh and they they are finally making a painting software that's for us artists you know and unlike procreate and uh infinite painter they're already working on a desktop version of fresco it's already happening man they're gonna they're going to kind of raffle stomp on these other companies unless they get their act together, <clears throat> which they should, man, because I like all of them. It's a, it's a shame. Uh, it's good for us, though, us users, right? <laughs> like if Fre Fresco ends up becoming a, an ultimately better software, uh, yeah, we just switch over to it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's God, really another a, program. <laughs> yeah, like, like what happened with 3D Coat and ZBrush, right? I literally just jumped from ZBrush to 3D Coat, and if now I'm like Logan Blender. There's no reason why I'll stick around for 3D code only, right? But like I got in on the on I got in on the best times. Like I got ZBrush when it was like you own it forever, right? And I got 3D code, you own it forever. And I'm still <laughs> encouraging them to still go sub, you know? Wait, are you grandfathered in for ZBrush? Like that's yeah, that's I the thing. always Dang, get the newest cool. version. That's what I'm saying. I've made literally hundreds of thousands of dollars from their tools and I only paid them like it was even cheaper than it was, it was like four hundred bucks for ZBrush. Jeez. Yeah, they fucking got robbed, dude. They should have been making at least like a fraction of a percentage of all the money I've made from all the games and movies I made. It's only fair, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it's totally fair. I believe you. <laughs> uh, I get like, you know, if you're just a student and starting out, you don't have money, but whatever. But once you start making money, yeah, like, yeah, take, take a, let them take some of your dough, dude. Like, they're only going to keep making better tools for you, dude. It's actually proven out with Photoshop. Photoshop updates uh, every other month, and they keep making the performance better and better. And they keep adding new features, more than they have ever had in my whole career using Photoshop. You know? Yeah. So I'm a supporter of that. And I, I encourage you guys to support that mentality, too. Like You, want, you don't want to, like, punish people for making more money, <laughs> for making great tools. Now, if Adobe started making garbage tools, uh, then yeah, I'll be in a different argument. I'll be like, okay, yeah, fuck these guys, dude. What are they doing with that money? Buying yachts and shit? But they are. They're making more tools. They're doing more things. They just are. They're increasing their stock photo stuff. They've made they made Fresco, right? Uh, they made a 3D rendering package that's still in the works, but eventually that could probably compete with stuff like Keyshot, Marmoset, all these other rendering packages. You know, they're doing it. Whether they're good now, it's in the works. And they got the bandwidth to kind of keep making it happen. So keep your eyes peeled. And nobody's going to complain once they actually start to exist, these tools I'm talking about.
All right. Yeah, I was just going to ask, when do you think I should uh, take your mentorship again? You think like a year? Yeah, just whenever you feel ready to do it again. Yeah, right. It doesn't matter to me. Awesome. All right, I'm going to take one, maybe two more questions, and then we'll end the class on a good note without me complaining about people complaining. <laughs> like I told you, it's like my least favorite thing. Complaining. Complaining. And I complain about complaining. Super meta. This guy looks like he's dancing. If, uh, if nobody asks and if the other guys don't mind, would you mind uh, having a look at my art session page and see if there is something is sticking out in terms of don't do this etc etc because yeah. I'm not sure if, well, yeah? uh, since we're on the let me just let me just do this instead since we're on the tail end of the class uh, I will offer this uh, option of like why don't you guys uh, share your portfolios in the Skype chat okay right? yeah um, and then this uh, weekend or sometime next week, I'll go through them and give you guys notes on each and every one. So that way everybody can have this opportunity. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah, and I'll try to grab them before you guys swamp the chat with your guys' own chatter. Um, yeah. But if you just do it now, I can grab them now. And then, okay, uh, cool. and then do that later. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I don't mind doing portfolio reviews, especially towards the end of the class. But since we're already like about to like really close it out, I don't mm. want to kind of be like only give you one and then everyone else is like, oh man, I should. Yeah, I totally one. understand. Man. Yeah, I think it's 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 a good opportunity for us all to kind of have, or everybody have an opportunity to get some, some love and attention, on their actual portfolios. Sweet. All right. Any other questions? All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. You guys are all rock stars. I uh, hope you guys the best. If I don't hear from you guys in, in a little bit, you know, good luck, man. And thanks for supporting the class. Thanks for doing good work. Keep on pushing yourselves. Don't be strangers to one another. You know, keep encouraging yourselves well after the class. Keep your eye on the prize, man. And uh, remember, you know, even though you know, I'm your guys a teacher for today's or for this month. There's no reason why you guys can't reach out to me either through Instagram or even through um, Facebook or even email. Like if you feel like you have some questions you want to still ask, uh, I'm always available. Just not, it just might not be as like consistent as like meeting up every class and be able to talk to me about it directly. But I do appreciate my students and I always try to give them feedback, even if it's just like a written advice, you know? Uh, you guys support me, so I support you guys. It's in my best interest, too, to make you guys all badasses. All right. Uh, and, yes, that was all in 3D code, what you just saw me do. Uh, I just saw your question, Stephen. <laughs> all those yeah, things the, <laughs> earlier. I was just talking about your concepts in general. Most of them are uh, in 3D code, right? Uh, no, there's some of them are in ZBrush. But oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. Like, uh, And just to kind of talk to that point, and then I'm going to sign off. Um, the idea that people don't know what software I use is kind of the point, right? Like, just pick one and then just get good at it. And, uh, and then moving to another one is not as challenging. And put your, put your time and effort into fundamental skills, not into tool skills, yeah? So that when a new tool comes out, you're not going to be um, like a, uh, a religious nut about the tool. This is why a lot of people, I think, have a hard time adapting because, they're oh, now I got to learn this other thing. It's like, yeah, you do because it's better. And so uh, like right now I had a meeting uh, and we were talking and I'm like, I guess I have to learn Houdini because Houdini is crazy. And you can do all this crazy stuff in three, uh, environment oh, yeah. production and 3D production for video game. And I'm like, bitch. So I'm gonna start learning it probably this weekend. I'm gonna start learning how to use some of it. Uh, slowly but surely, just dip my toes in it a bit. Anyways, peace out y'all. Have a good one, have a great weekend. Uh, and happy Mother's Day, and talk to you guys later. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.